Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. And if you happen to be a fan of Stratomatic Baseball or Payoff Pitch Baseball, welcome as well. As you can tell by the title of this video, today we will be doing a comparison of Stratomatic Baseball to Payoff Pitch Baseball. And uh, if you missed my comparison of Stratomatic Baseball to Status Pro Baseball, that went up fairly recently, and I will put an end card, um, an end screen um, connection to it at the end of the video so that you can go watch that. But if you watch that, I'm going to be following the same ground rules for this one as I did for that one, which is I'm not going to be playing a game. I'm not going to be starting a game, really, of either one. I am just going to give you a quick overview of each game and how the game engines work, what the pluses and minuses are in my mind to the game. And uh, again, you know, I'm going to preface, preface, preface what I am saying about each game to say that I do like both games. I mean, I really haven't met a baseball game that I don't like. So, like I say, let's, whoa, I got it upside down. Let's get on with our comparison of Stratomatic Baseball to Payoff Pitch Baseball. So here we have my uh, Payoff Pitch Baseball setup. Uh, right over here you can see I've got my uh, fast action deck and I've got a pitcher which is Danny Duffy of the Kansas City Royals right now and then over here we have a lineup well not really a lineup but this is um, the Chicago White Sox and on top I have Tim Anderson and then we have the Kauffman Stadium card which um, in status or in uh, payoff pitch baseball, every team has a stadium card, and in some cases, as you can see with um, with the uh, Kansas City Royals, this is a card for a certain time of the year. So, what what card you would play would, uh, or what card you would use for a home team for a home game would depend on uh, not only the stadium, but in some cases, what time of the year you're playing the game. I have tokens out now. The baseball board that I have is a Stratomatic board. I know that stat or that payoff. I keep saying status pro. Um, I know that payoff pitch. You can get a board. That payoff pitch will send you I don't know I don't have it so when I ordered the um, what I have is the 2019 set so obviously when I ordered my set I don't know if the board is like something that's extra that you have to order and I just decided I have boards I don't need to do that however I would use a board when I do my games uh, whether I play them just for my own enjoyment or whether I put it up on the channel I would always use a board because um, you know a field like I have here I would not you know just use or, you know just um, have on camera uh, like the scorecard or a dice tower and that's it and you can just see the dice so now here we go we're gonna discuss how the game what the game has uh, over here, as I said, you have a fast action deck, which comes into play at certain times. Now, you can use the fast action deck instead of dice. The game does have a dice component, or it can have a fast action deck component, or you can mix the two. Because um, there, there are times you would have to refer to the fast action deck and there um but if you don't want to use the dice you don't have to so uh let's look at first let's look at some cards you've got danny duffy as i said here's danny duffy's pitching card and here is tim anderson's uh hitting card 
Now, what's cool about um, uh, Payoff Pitch is that it incorporates both um, both the pitcher and the batter on nearly every outcome. So you can see on Danny Duffy's card, you have a you have a two through twelve where it refers you to to a certain colored bar with a label and then over on tim anderson's card you would see those same um a lot of those same let me let me get my hand out of the way so it stops making a shadow you would see that you could you could look and see a lot of those same categories so for instance let's roll the dice let's roll all of the dice because that's what you would do and uh, what we rolled is a um, an eight on the two six-sided dice, and then it also comes with two uh, uh, ten-sided die. So this would be the um, the tens, and then th this is the uh, after that. So what you have here is a twenty-seven. So you have an eight and a twenty-seven. So what you do is you would look at. Um, Danny Duffy's card and eight on his card is in play. And then you would go over to um, uh, Anderson's card and you look at in play. And as you recall, we rolled a 27 and 27 in play um, is um, a single. So in this particular case, uh, Tim Anderson would get a single out of that. Now, um, you can see that in play on Tim Anderson only goes up to 36. So if the roll had been something, if the two 10-sided um, die had been something other than, um, well, if it had been uh, 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 greater than 36, you would have come over here and you would have referred to the out chart to see what kind of an out it is. So that's kind of cool, uh, the way that it does that, um, because it in incorporates both the pitcher and the batter nearly all the time. Um, I think there may be, like, if you roll, I I'm not sure offhand, but I think if you roll like a defense on Danny Duffy's card, you can see two as a defense. If you roll the defense, I think you just go right to the defense, and then you would uh, pick a, um, a fast action card and find out um, what happens on that. Also, if you have runners on base and you get, as you recall, we got a single by Tim Anderson. If you have runners on base and he gets a hit, then you would refer, again, you would refer over to the fast action cards to see uh, what happened. Well, you know, whether the runners went an extra base on the single or not. So that's basically how that works. And of course, um, you can see, um, I think that there's a, uh, yeah. You can see on Danny Duffy's card that he has ballpark. And if you roll the ballpark, then you would refer to Ameritrade Park, Amer the Ameritrade Park card, because we are in TD Ameritrade Park, uh, the Royals' home uh, stadium. And that's basically how it works. There are charts, of course, as there are with many games. Um, and we will just take a quick look at these. Now, these are nice, hard, durable charts that um, come into play on certain situations. You have the defense, out, hit, um, errors. Um, but like I say, the, um, the charts are... The charts and directions and everything are very nice, very nicely done, and very sturdy. Um, also, as you will notice, um, well, actually, I don't have it on my cards. Um, I bought the cards from the company, but um, it doesn't appear as though my cards have versus lefty and versus righty. So... Um, I don't know if they didn't have that with the, I don't know, with the 2019, a lot of them that I've seen have the righty and lefty versus righty versus lefty. Um, and Danny Duffy is a left-handed pitcher. So you would think Anderson would do better against that. Um, but in this particular case, uh, he doesn't have that. So you would just go off the reading that you got. 
but I have seen sets. I have seen people do it online, you know, play uh, payoff pitch online. And I have seen where the batter's cards do have versus righty versus lefty. So um, apparently the set that I have doesn't have that. Um, I, it's not a big deal to me. I mean, I if you know me, you know, I play basic strat all the time. That's almost only what I play. And uh, that doesn't take into account uh, righty and lefty, um, the basic game. So it's not a big deal for me that it doesn't have it. Now, um, you, uh, as I showed you before, we rolled the dice to see um, what the results were. Now, if you don't want to use the dice, you can use you can use just the fast action deck, and you can see that this fast action card right here says two d six a roll of five and the 2d10s 87. So we would have in that case referred to five on Duffy's card, which is tough. And then um, 87 under tough would be an out. And then you would look at the 87 range on the out for Tim Anderson. And you can see that would be a ground ball or a ground ball out to the, um, what was it? Not 87. Yeah, it would be a ground out to shortstop. So, so that's basically how that how the uh, the game works. Uh, just in a nutshell, you know, you've got your fast action card deck. You've got your player cards. It incorporates pitcher and batter, which is really nice. You can use dice or just the fast action de uh, card deck if you want. It's your preference. Although, as I said, the fast action card deck will come into play at certain times, even if you are just rolling the dice, I believe. I don't know if you can get through an entire game or play an entire game without using the fast action card deck at all. I don't think you can, uh, but I could be wrong about that. I don't know the game that intimately. Um, I've only... Uh, Purchased it only fairly recently and have just started getting into it But as I say, I like it a lot and one aspect of it that I really do like is that it incorporates both the pitcher and the batter on Nearly every outcome. It doesn't it's not one or the other like it is in Stratomatic So with all of that having been said about payoff pitch, let's talk about Stratomatic all right, so now we're going to talk about Stratomatic. And here you can see my Stratomatic setup. Still with the Stratomatic board. And again, I have seen people do games where they, um, where they just show the score sheet or just the dice tower. But I prefer to use the board, the, you know, the, um, the outs markers and the ball field and all that stuff. I, I just prefer to do it. It's easier for me. And I think it's uh, more enjoyable for the viewer to watch that. So anyway, um, this is your basic setup. You've got your split cards. You've got your uh, board. you got your dice. Now, uh, Stratomatic is a dice driven game um, they do have fast action cards or you know what you would call possibly fast action cards which are right here but these are only that's really just a split cards for split decisions and most people use a 20 sided die like that one right there and then that's what I do too uh, but you do have the option to use either one Again, we're talking about the White Sox against the Royals. This is the 2020 Imagined set. Um, it has charts. Uh, this is uh, the basic. There are advanced charts and there are basic charts. Here you've got the charts for the basic game. Um, you know, ground outs, fly balls, what happens on uh, hit and run, squeeze play, infield in, uh, and your basic fielding charts. You got your cards. So right here we're looking at um, Lewis Robert uh, for the uh, White Sox and Franchi Cordero for the Royals, their batting cards. And then you have the uh, pitching cards over here. You've got Dylan Cease of the White Sox and uh, Chris Bubich of the Royals. Now, with Stratomatic, where that, uh, one thing that is noticeably different about Stratomatic, well, two things. 
The first thing is it is dice driven. There are no fast action cards to determine outcomes of what happens. You have to roll dice. That's where these come in. You've got uh, the column die, which in this case would be the blue one. And then you've got the two white dice, which go down the column. And so you can see that the batters have one, two, and three on their cards for columns. And then down the columns, you have the 12, two, two through 12. And the pitchers have four through six for their columns and then two through 12. So if we, if we roll the dice here, and we roll a 6-6, six, six, that is. And let's say that Lewis Robert was at bat, so he would be batting against Bubich. The 6 column is on Bubich's card, because he's a pitcher. And then you would go down to 6, and you would see that that is a single 1-9, to nine, or a line-out 10-20. to 20. And uh, it's fortunate that that's what we came up with, because on a on a decision like that, you have a split decision where you have to do a split card or roll the 20 sided die. So if I roll the 20 sided die and uh, we get a 17, uh, Bubich would get an out. It would be a line out to second base on that play. Or if we use the split deck and we drew an 18, it would still be an out. So. The split deck is 1 through 20, er, yeah, yeah, it's uh, 1 through 20 twice. So there should be a 40 card deck that goes 1 through 22 times. Um, I prefer to use the 20 sided die because you can get any result at any time. If you have a uh, split, if you use a split card deck and you don't shuffle them until after you've gone through them and a 1 comes up, let's say, twice, then you know. You're not going to get another one until you um, use up all the cards. Now, of course, you could reshuffle them also after every half inning. But I just prefer to use a split die, and that's what most people um, also do. Um, and so that's how that works. Now, they do have a... Uh, they do have a, an advanced Stratomatic does an advanced um, and super advanced and so you have as you can see here on Franchi Cordero this is his advanced side card so he has the same columns but he has versus left-handed pitcher on the left and versus right-handed pitcher on the right you also have more in-depth ratings like you have a center field three um, E1 for his arm and an E25. The center field 3 is his range, the negative 1 is his throwing arm, and the E25 is his error rating. But if you look on the front for center field, it just says he's a center field 3. That's the basic rating. Of course, somebody with some people with house rules, they combine the two. I uh, also have done a video where I discuss my house rules for Stratomatic Baseball. Might want to go check that one out. Um, I won't link to that one, but if I get requests, I will uh, send the links to people that request it. Or you can just look on my channel because it's in my Stratomatic Baseball channel um, or my Stratomatic Baseball series on my channel. Um, so anyway, that's the that's basically how the Stratomatic works. Of course, the noticeable difference with this as opposed to payoff pitch beside the fact uh, that it is dice driven is that you get an either or for the decision. It's either the pitcher or the batter on every play. Uh, you don't get, there's no kind of melding of the two like payoff pitch has, which makes payoff pitch nice. Now, where payoff pitch um, and strat another way that they the two of them differ, particularly if you play the, uh, so here we the have basic version, particularly if you play the basic version of um, Stratomatic, it is much easier. It's much more intuitive. You'll pick the game up quicker if you've never played it before. Um, or if it's been years since you played, played it and you pick it up, you're just going to get right into it and you'll be able to just hit the ground going. 
but with payoff pitch there are it's a little bit more complicated it takes a bit more time to learn um, it wasn't quite as simple as I showed so it does take a little bit more time to learn that um, another difference too and I, uh, I didn't discuss this with payoff pitch but the cards for Stratomatic the cards are kind of the card stock is flimsy you can see how that's you know kind of flimsy right there um, whereas for um, payoff pitch the card stock is excellent it's very sturdy cards that if you order them from the company and also with payoff pitch you can order a PDF of the cards which is I would think cheaper than buying the cards from the company and they'll send you can download the PDF uh, you pay for that download it and then you can print off your own cards on whatever card stock you want to print them off on so that's also nice with Stratomatic the only option you have if you want a certain year is to order these cards from the company um, that is your only option so um, and something I noticed with payoff pitch that was kind of cool too they have a uh, they have a make-believe like a fantasy make-believe player league they give you a bunch of cards of players that don't exist and you can make your own teams from it it's kind of cool I don't know that I would I think it's like $34 I don't know that I would pay $34 for a completely made-up league but um, it, it is kind of nice and that's the only one I've seen that does that I'm sure there might be other companies that do that but uh, so far that's the only company that I've seen that does a make-believe a make-up totally make-believe league so uh, those are that that is my discussion on you know the basic workings of Stratomatic baseball um, and uh, you know and then we will I will go to my conclusion coming right up so there you got a basic overview of payoff pitch and Stratomatic baseball now of course I'm I you know like I always say I'm partial to Stratomatic because I played Stratomatic all my life it's the first game that I ever found and I've been playing it for you know something like 40 years if you can believe that so I am partial to that but payoff pitch is an excellent game and you remember I, I talked about the quality of the cards look at that that is a nice quality card little glossy front there you know so yeah the cards are excellent if you order them from the company um, and it's nice that you have the option um, I, and again I'm assuming the cheaper option with payoff pitch of getting the PDF of the seasons downloading it and then printing it off yourself on whatever kind of cardstock you want to print them on whereas with ba with uh, Stratomatic you do have to order the cards from the company um, let's see if there was something else I was missing uh, but basically I mean both games have a lot of the same features uh, payoff pitch has the stadium effects by using a stadium card whereas Stratomatic has the uh, stadium effects um, on a, a basically a stadiums effect uh, chart that would come with each season um, that you can refer to in the advanced and or super advanced game uh, th that doesn't come into effect in the basic game both games have righty versus lefty although remember the set that I happen to have bought again I don't understand why but the set that I happen to have bought um, did not have righty lefty um, matchups on the batter cards I have no idea why but I have seen people on YouTube doing payoff pitch where the batter cards do have versus righty versus lefty so I'm assuming that that feature is there who knows maybe there are a set of cards you can buy that don't have it and a set of cards that you can buy that do have it and I just didn't get that set of cards um, 
So, I mean, those are the basic overviews. I think for ease of play, Stratomatic is better than Payoff Pitch. Um, for realism, I think they're probably, I would uh, estimate they're probably roughly equal for realism. If you played an entire season of Payoff Pitch and you played an entire season of Stratomatic, you would probably get uh, similar results. You know, if you played the same season, you used the players this, uh, roughly the same amount of times, you would probably get roughly the same uh, statistics, which would be um, uh, very close to what they were in reality. Um, again, um, with Stratomatic, it's either or, pitcher, batter, 50-50. You refer to the pitcher or you refer to the batter. With payoff pitch, it kind of melds them together to come up with a result on each um, batter versus pitcher confrontation, which is uh, kind of nice. So, it, you know, it's hard it, with any of these games. When you compare one game to another, you're usually comparing apples to oranges. So it's hard to say this game's better, that game's better. You know, it's just what your preference is. Um, if you like, um, if if you like using fast action decks then status pro or or payoff pitch is probably one that you would like better than stratomatic if you like rolling dice a lot of guys they just like to get the dice in their hands and roll the dice they love that um then you're a stratomatic or payoff pitch guy because payoff pitch you can also roll the dice so um they're both excellent games. They're both, like, if I was rating them both on a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably give Stratomatic uh, at least an 8, 8.5. Eight probably give Payoff Pitch about about an 8. I mean, you know, somewhere in that, that area. Um, it is, uh, it's, a, it's a little, like Stratomatic, you can play a Stratomatic game. A basic Stratomatic game, you can play in, like, 20 minutes. Potentially, if you know the game inside and out, you play it in 20 minutes. Uh, payoff pitch games like Payoff Pitch and Status Pro, even if you know them well, you're not going to play a game in 20 or 25 minutes because of everything that's involved, all the charts that you might have to refer to, flipping multiple uh, fast action cards. Um, if you're using the fast action cards in Payoff Pitch instead of rolling the dice, um, and, he, and even if you're rolling the dice and you're rolling the dice, you know all the time for every result then you have to refer to payoff pitch charts um, for the results the multiple charts that they have so whereas Stratomatic has fewer charts to refer to um, to slow the game down a little less than you know the other two do but they're both excellent games I put them right in the both in the, the eight area eight eight and a half um, you know maybe nine I don't know you know, I'm just saying really good. I love them both. So what do you guys think? Who out there has played a lot of payoff pitch and can even tell me a little bit more about it? Um, because, you know, like I said, I've only recently gotten into that. Um, whereas with Stratomatic, I've been playing it for years. But, what do you, you know, anybody out there played both extensively? Which one do you like? Um, which, uh, w what do you like about each one specifically? I think I've done a pretty good job at scoping out where the differences are and how those would affect the, uh, the game or your enjoyment of the game. So that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.